With Dublin under martial law, three and a half thousand people were arrested. But it wasn't just the British who saw the rising as an act of treachery at a particularly difficult time. The Easter rebels were marched away to be interned in Britain past hostile Dublin crowds. The men who were being brought away from Dublin to be interned in England in Frangoch and other internment camps or prisons, they were hissed and spat on by the assembled multitude on the streets of Dublin. The people along the road were throwing cabbage stalks and stones at us and spitting at us. Uh, you spit in your face, you know, and uh, call you all kinds of bastards and everything else like that, you know. The ordinary people at that time thought it was a stab in the back when England was fighting for its life that Ireland should rise. Those people were uh, the wives of uh, soldiers serving in France at the time. I suppose they had a, a natural re resentment uh, to the fact that we were fighting the British. During the fighting, 450 people had been killed and over 2,500 injured. British shells had reduced some of the finest Georgian streets in Europe to ruins. Now the leaders must be punished. As the British made safe the shaky ruins of Dublin, the executions began. On May the 3rd, it was Pierce and two others. There was such a stillness and, 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 and over Dublin. I don't know what it was like in the rest of the country, but in Dublin alone, people where they used to speak openly before now are speaking in whispers. They couldn't get over the shock. Next day, it was the turn of four more. I think it was the being long drawn out each morning. Morning, people would say, "Well, were there more executions today?" Another was shot the following day. That changed the whole atmosphere of the the city, city. Whatever about the country. At that time, it didn't make much difference to the country at all. But to the city of Dublin, those executions were the, the turning point. Three days later, another fall. The final straw was James Connolly, who was shot. Although he was so badly wounded, they thought he'd probably die anyhow. He had to be put on a chair and shot dead. The executions had made martyrs of the Easter rebels. That, I think, had a lot to do with the, um, with the changing of the, the feeling of the people. This is what started the whole flame. From a spark, as Pierce was one of the sparks, Robert Demet and all these men back, from a, a smouldering fire, these little sparks were there, and they just wanted to be a breeze to blow them up. In 1917, Dublin greets the men and women of the Easter Rising on their release from British jails. Extreme Republicans before the executions are fated now as Irish patriots. I have never seen Dublin so packed since or before. Some of the men were crying themselves. 
you know, a joy. I couldn't describe it to you now. It was so joyful and happy. Everyone seemed to be happy. And people were throwing their arms around you and saying, isn't it wonderful, isn't it wonderful? We've got our men back again. These scenes show the swing in Irish opinion from the constitutional methods of Redmond towards the more direct methods of the Republican Party of Sinn Féin. Now, home rule was not to be enough. <laughs> 